Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my RPG series. In this episode, we will be adding tag listeners. Now, what do we mean by tag listeners? Well, if we are going to be using a system which we have created so far with gameplay tags, which allows you to sort of determine a property for a character, then it is very flexible to have an ability for a different system that wants to know about this to request to have information sent whenever something is happening with this tag. So if we go into our gameplay tags and our blueprint component for tags, we, we could implement a function that allows a user, well, in this case a user would be like any other blueprint essentially that wants to know something, to uh, designate a tag that they want to have information about and then when we have that information changed we send to that person or that class the information that is relevant essentially. So let's start off with that and let's follow this whole process. We add a function, we can call it add tag listener. And as an input here, we want to have a gameplay tag. And I think this, this is a gameplay tag, good. And we will call it uh, tag to listen for. Now, um, let's see we this is something that is probably one of the like weaker points of blueprints uh, because we, we can't do all the fancy fancy stuff that we want to do but essentially here we need to now establish what kind of a tag are we listening for and to make this as compartmentalized as possible as well as reusable as possible as well as also as uh, convenient as possible, we will be creating a macro. So let's create a macro and let's call it uh, determine tag change. Like so. And uh, let's open that up. Oh, we have it open. Excellent. Now, what we want to do is first of all, we will have the information of a tag. So we'll have an input here. We'll create a yeah, gameplay tag. Uh, input, we can name it something like. Uh, since this is going to be used in different other places, we probably should name it something else. But for now, we will call it tag to listen for. And we could always rename it later if we feel that we have a need for it. Now, this you can see only created the node in here for the actual gameplay tag. We also want to have an execution in here. So we'll add another uh, one and we'll put it to the top. We'll change it to be of the type exec, which gives us the exec executable for it. We will rene rename it to execute, which will allow the name to disappear, which makes it look a little bit more clean and I like it that way. And then as an output, we want to have what kind of a tag that has been changed. Now, in this instance, the only tag that we actually have is the dev tag. So let's create an executive branch and we'll call it dead change. Now what we want to do is we want to compare what tag we want to listen here against and we say equal and we'll make a branch like so and we'll hook it up and the result from this should be the condition. So if you send in here that you want to listen for the tag that says that is of the type state.dead then we should return dead change. And we can also have another one as a fallback, which we can call other or something. And we'll just hook up our faults to that. Now, how can we make use of this? Well, if we go back to the function that we created, our add tag listener, we can now say determine tag to change. And we send in the tag that we got in. And if it is the dead change, we can now say this this um, this tag has this recipient interested in it. 
uh, it's a bit difficult to explain, but essentially what we want to do is we want to broadcast the information about a tag that has been changed. And to do this, the best way that I can think of it would be using event dispatchers. So creating an event dispatcher is easy. We go over here and create it and we can call this one um, dead state change, for example, like so. And now we get to the point where uh, we, we need to talk a little bit about how how to conveniently send information. Uh, because we will be implementing multiple different tags here that will be notifying about them having been changed. And most of them will likely want to send the same kind of information, but some of them might want to send something slightly different. But for everyone to have the same entry point of this function, add tag listener, we need to have a signature for all our event dispatchers that is identical. And what I mean by this is if we do drag out this one and say call, uh, actually not call, bind, like so, you can see that we have this event here where we can uh, hook up to something saying like this is supposed to happen whenever this um, the event dispatcher is called. And by dragging this over to our function here, we can actually add a pin saying that this event should be funneled in here from whoever is calling the, the function. Um, to this to work, for this to work, this event needs to have the same signature for all of them. And how we will do that is, we'll first remove this, and we'll remove this is by adding inputs to our signature of our uh, dead state changed here. However, uh, it can be a bit finicky if you add something like, uh, let's say you send the tag that's changed here, uh, and then later on you decide that you want to add something like, okay, which, which controller was the instigator of this? And then you send the instigator and stuff like that. Every time you change that, you will sort of get other event dispatchers out of sync and you have to like go and fix all of them and uh, mostly it's not going to be a big problem it's going to be something like right click and refresh the node or something like that but it might be a little bit cumbersome to do that especially if you're going to be doing multiple changes over the course of the development an easier way to handle this is to make sure that you have a structure that you send and by doing that, you can always say that all of the different dispatchers, all the different events are expecting the same structure at all times. And if you add an, a variable to that structure, it will affect all of them at the same time. And that should be an easier way to maintain this sort of thing. So let's go to our gameplay tags folder here and let's create a, um, a structure. So right click, go to blueprints, go to structure type in s underscore um, let's call it gameplay context we name it like that because context because it's a contextual structure and gameplay because it's related to gameplay that should make it pretty easy to identify what is happening and in this one we can add um, let's say gameplay tag so whichever tag is relevant, this might be a bit superfluous because if you have like an event that is listening for the dead state, you know that you're getting the dead state information. However, you might have in cases where you have the same event running for multiple different uh, tags. And in that case, it could be good to send which, which, which tag it actually is referring to in this case. Uh, so we'll call this variable a context tag. We'll add another variable. And this one should be something like um, what the total of the tags are essentially. Uh, because that can be useful to know. So gameplay tag and choose container. And this one will then be the actual active tags. And another thing that is often very useful is to have uh, things like the actor or uh, the controller that caused something like the dead state. 
and that is why we created the origin structure. So we'll create that and send it as well, like so. And if you later on want to expand upon this, it should be much easier because you won't have a problem with like all the interfaces updating and getting these things. Anyway, saving that, going back to our gameplay tags, we can now go to our dead state change and we can say we want to have uh, an, uh, a signature for this one. So we go here to the inputs and we type in uh, s gameplay tag context, G gameplay context. And we can call this gameplay tag context. Now, just to make it easier for us moving on later on, uh, what we can do is we, we want to have all of them to have the same signature and you can actually copy a signature here, but you can only copy from certain different things. So what we can do is we can go out here and we can drag out this um, event, type in bind, and do this and make an event out here. And I call this signature. What I've essentially have done here now is I have an event bound here that is uh, just called signature to the specific uh, the event dispatcher. I have nothing connected to it, so it's not going to run. I just put it here to make it convenient to create in the future. Uh, because now if I were to, let's say I create another event dispatcher, and, uh, keep that name, we can say copy signature and we can find here this event that we've called signature and it will get this same structure that we want to have and give it the same name and everything like that, which is convenient for us when we want to add things moving on forward. You don't have to do this if you want to, it's just convenience for me. Anyway, with that created, uh, let's see here. We want to go back to our tag listener. Where did it go? There you go. From here now, we want to say, okay, if it is the dead changed, um, dead change tag that's being sent in here, then we want to return the event whenever this one is called. So we're binding the event that they're sending in here to say that should be called whenever this is called. And that is essentially all that we need to do here. So now similarly to how we have loved to bind events, we now need to be able to notify about events. So we'll create another function. We'll call this uh, notify tag change. That's a good name. We know that we will have a gameplay tag as an input, and we can name it uh, tag to listen for, like so. And after that, we want to determine, so, so essentially now we, at this point, we have had a tag change. That's when this is being called. So we'll determine first, what tag is it? And in this case, we only have the dead or other. So that's what we're determining here. But if it is the dead change, then we want to take the event dispatcher for that. We want to say, uh, call that event dispatcher like so. And then we can return here. So coming in here, if a dead, uh, dead tag is changed, it should be determined over here. It should be calling this um, event dispatcher and anybody who's listening to it should then be notified about it. So let's add this. The two different places we have created where a change can happen to a tag is our add tag and our remove tag. So we'll add that functionality here now. So we'll take our notified tag change We'll call it at the end of this remove, no, sorry, add tag. And the tag we're sending in is the tag that we're currently processing over here. We go to remove tag and we do exactly the same thing. We add the notify tag change in the end and we send in the tag that we're actually processing in this part. Like so. And that should be all that we need. So let's create a test and see if this is actually working now. So what we're going to do is we're going to be creating another key, uh, keyboard for, and for this one, we're going to say we want to add a tag listener. So we add listener and now we get to specify what tag do we want to listen for. And we can designate our dead tag here now in this case. From this event, now we can now drag out and type uh, choose add event and we'll get an event with the context um, interface signature of this uh, listener 
and we can say dead has been changed. And we don't know how it has been changed, we're just getting the information that it has been changed. So either a tag has been removed or added. So to change, check this very quickly, very easily, we'll just say dead changed in capital letters. Compile, save. Let's play. So pressing one now, we get a stack amount of dead one and nothing else happened. Pressing one again, nothing happens. Pressing three reduces it and it doesn't work. So let's find out what the problem is. The easiest way is probably to put some, uh, let's see here, state dead. We want to go to our tags. We want to make sure that, first of all, that we're binding. So let's see, add listener over there. Put a breakpoint here. We'll put one at notify changed. Like so, and that should hopefully be enough. Let's see. Let's. All oh, right. I didn't actually. My bad. It might still work. I didn't press the four key. The four key is the one that actually sets up the bind. So if I add. Um, okay. Now it's uh, it's in debug mode. Let's remove the breakpoints uh, just to see if I am correct or not. So in the listener we had one breakpoint. We remove that one. And we had one in notify tag changed. So the the event dispatcher needs to be bound first. So if I press one, we add a dead. It might be difficult to see. We add a dead state uh, tag here. Pressing four now means that we have bound the event. So now if we add something, we should get yes, dead changed, and we get the new stack amount. Pressing three reduces the stack, and we see dead changed, dead changed. So every time it that we're adding or removing a tag now, we're getting that the event, once we have bound it here, of course, will type out that it's changed here now. This allows us to have any class that we want to just hook up easily to a tag and say, when this tag is changed in somehow, I can then have some logic to determine if I want to react in a certain way. It can be anything like uh, uh, you put uh, an ability or uh, let's say, actually, let, let's get back to this later on. It might be easier when we have a little bit more stuff on, in place. But this might be a good place to stop for now. And I'll hope you, to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.